It is my absolute pleasure now to introduce Kenneth Hole from Tind. Uh, Kenneth is the project manager of Tind and also uh, the co-founder of this very young organization. He um, is based at CERN in Switzerland. And an interesting fact about Kenneth is that he once was a professional skier and I guess he has left this, uh, this profession for the very exciting profession of supporting academic libraries. He's currently working on helping the UN uh, migrate their system, uh, uh, their uh, LIS system, and I think he has some very interesting insights to provide us today. Thank you. I'd like to welcome you all to this strategy update about TIN Technologies. My name is Kenneth Hall, and I'm the product manager. TIN Technologies is a service provider of the open source digital library in Vino developed by CERN. Today in my update, I will talk about three things. I will talk about the newest release in Vino 2.0. I will talk about the new application area in Vino as a data repository. I will talk about the upcoming electronic resource management system. But first, as I don't think many of you know much about the software from before, I want to take you back in time to give you a real introduction to the system. We have to go all the way back to 1993. CERN has always been a pioneer when it comes to developing IT applications for their own need, such as the HTTP, which was developed just a few years earlier, which we know as Internet today. At this time, in 1993, the library was using Aleph from Ex Libris as a library system. The CERN IT department wanted to create a web-based user interface for Aleph so that the users could go online and discover the books owned by the library. They developed the OPAC and launched it in 1993 under the name Weblib. Throughout the 1990s, the library continued their regular procedures of mailing out printed journals to physicists around the world. They mailed it to all physicists. And at the end of the century, this took a larger and larger part of the budget. And the library initiated the idea of creating a web-based institutional repository where the, libraries, where the researchers could go online and download digital copies of the articles. The IT department gathered a group of great engineers and created the platform, which it launched in 2002 as its CERN document server. They had both the digital articles and it had the role as an OPAC for Aleph. They later made an open source and renamed it to Invino in 2006, where more prominent institutions starting to use it. The library continued to use Aleph as a library system until 2011. CERN was actually one of the first libraries in Europe that used the system, and they now had it for over 20 years, and has found it to be out of date. It contained functionalities that belonged to a pre-web lifetime, and it didn't fit the workflows and procedures anymore. In addition to be obsolete, they found it to be quite expensive. They paid between 20 and 30 euros per year, 1,000 euros per year, for having an on-site installation. This put the library in a situation where they were starting to think about if it were possible to extend the institutional repository system to become an integrated library system. The IT department did the necessary modification to the architecture and added the new mod modules that were needed to make this happen and it launched it as a new service on a new version in 2011. In this time period, more and more organizations were using Invino as an institutional repository. And a typical situation has been that CERN has helped them to set it up and give basic, basic uh, feedback and requests on the community-driven mailing list. But they haven't been able to give better support, such as software as a service, to these libraries. And therefore, the IT department, together with the Knowledge Transfer Group at CERN, wanted an external vendor to give commercial support to Invino. And Tim Technologies spun off from CERN in 2013 to commercialize this software and give a broader set of services. And we have been focusing on delivering Invino as a cloud solution. We have delivered Invino as institutional repository and integrated library system, and we are now adding data repositories to our product portfolio. We give libraries access to Invino on a personalized platform 
where we are hosting all of the data and do necessary updates and maintenance. Together with administrative support, we provide this with an all-inclusive annual fee. Since our start in 2013, two years ago, we have a steady growth of new libraries using our services. And it's been a good mix between academic libraries and special libraries. This takes us to where we are today and to our strategy update. And I'm going to start to talk about the new release in Vino 2.0, which was released earlier this year. The, CERN, the Invino community, with CERN as a head developer, has been working on this new version since 2012. It is completely built from the ground with a new architecture, and it was re released in March this year. It's modular, so we can simply activate the different modules we need for your application areas. This has made it possible for TIN to create different product packages of integrated library systems, institutional repositories, and data repositories. We will continue to deliver this as standalone products, but we are also going to deliver it as one integrated solution. Because we believe that the future library will be using one platform for more of the different services. We believe that the libraries can save resources by having one platform, as many of the tasks that need to be done are similar, which makes it unnecessary with multiple softwares. In addition, having more of the staff working on one platform will make the library more responsive as it is easier to allocate resources for other projects. I will go through the different application areas and give some examples of new opportunities that comes with the new platform. And I will start on the institutional repositories. It is used for both documents, multimedia, and special collections. New flexible overlays make it possible for TIN to customize the user interface to optimize a presentation of the different content. We also worked a lot on the user friendliness and efficiency for the user. We have integrated with external databases such as Crossref and Archive to, easily, to make it easier for the researchers to upload new data. They can easily copy paste IDs such as DOI and have more of the metadata pre-filled. All of the reason to make it easier to upload so that you will have more of, your, more of the content in, in, your, in a repository for preservation. In a similar manner, we integ integrated with internal and external knowledge bases for auto completion to make it more efficient for the users and to increase the data quality. The new version has also opened up a complete new application area, and I'm pleased to announce that TIN are now providing data repositories on Invenio. We will provide institutions with a place where they can upload data sets, software, and related images to the research, such as medical images. This is an example from the CERN Open Data Sites, which was launched six months ago and contain approximately 37 terabytes of research data from the experiments at CERN. It's a customization and development to this platform, which is the base of the package TIN are now delivering. In addition to preservation, we believe that the interactivity with the users are important and engage the researchers to upload new content and to reuse what's already there. Therefore, we have a great focus on visualization and have integrated with different, different application, web applications for easily visualized data. This is an example from an external program where you can easily visualize and change the parameters from a CSV file. We can also integrate with more custom applications for more special events. We have integrated with GitHub, which is the most popular place for developers and researchers to store the code today. And this integration makes it very easy for researchers to upload the content to the repository. And if they do any changes at GitHub, this can be automatically synced into the, into the repository in a new version. The new version can integrate with data sites so that you can assign DOIs and make the data citable. We also make it easy for the researchers to link to other sources which they are used in their research, both publications and other data sets. This will later make it easier for the user to discover new and related content.
The new version also makes it possible to integrate with funding agencies so that you can easily, or the researchers can easily themselves report for grants they have been given. This example is given from open air where the researcher can put in the grant IDs and it will automatically be sent to open air, special for European projects. CERN has been working with large data sets for a long time. And they used this experience to develop a new storage module where the focus has been on the capacity to upload large data sets and be able to upload much more files at one time. We believe that this upgrade will make it possible for institutions to upgrade even the larger data sets to the site. And now over to the integrated library system, which for many of you is the heart of the library. As Invino, or as a, in, Invino as an ILS system has been born digital, it hasn't adopted all the complexity which you can find in other systems which are focusing more on printed material. As libraries, libraries are using more and more of the resources on electronic resources, we would like to keep it that way of keeping it simple. It's therefore a perfect solution for libraries which are looking for a simple and intuitive system. We have used a great amount of effort to make the user interface easy and clear for the libraries to, do, to use, and also the workflows to do the need, needed operations. The open architectures makes it also possible to integrate with other external services, and one example is EBSCO EDS, where, where TIN is an ELS partner. We and TIN are eager of creating good workflows for the libraries so they can easily and sufficient efficient manage the electronic resources. We have therefore decided to develop an electronic resource management system based on external knowledge base called GoKB, Global Open Knowledge Base. GoKB is a community-driven, free knowledge base which contains key publication information. It tracks the changes of packages and license information over time so that you can better have a good overview of what you are paying for right now. What we found interesting with this knowledge base is the idea of crowdsourcing. It's freely available and libraries themselves can help update the knowledge base to the benefit of all of us. The goal is to reduce the duplication of effort and increase the data quality, which will help the libraries to save a lot of money when they develop their collections. We are in a phase now where we are looking for partners for the development of this ERM system to help us to define the requirements. Our goal is to launch the service in the end of next year. So far, we have gotten established one partnership and that's with the Library of California Institute of Technology. And we're looking for three to four, five partners to help us to define the new requirements for the system. We are looking for libraries that want to simplify the workflows and re reduce the complexity. We're looking for libraries that want to focus on electronic and digital resources. And we are looking for libraries that are not going to issue a 100-page RFP about detailed requirements that belong to the past. Are you ready to take a different approach, a more holistic approach? If you believe your library is, we want to get in touch with you. This was our strategy update here at Libre 2015. If you find it interesting, please go online now on your cell phones and your tablets and sign up for our newsletter at libre.tin.io. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kenneth. Are there any questions uh, from the floor about uh, Kenneth's presentation? Christina, do we have? Do we have a mic? So I, I take that your system is overall open source, so yes. that we, we could have a look look on on that. That is very good. And then, as many many libraries already have a discovery system, as you mentioned, it's possible to integrate the discovery system to sort of the back end of the ILS, for example. Yeah. Then I'd um, like to ask about the 
ERM system, so you, you are seeking partners. Uh, are you interested in consortia, doing licensing, sort of, maybe? because there is a certain workflow to support the consortia activities, which are a bit different, perhaps, than individual library yes. processes? So, at the moment, we've been talking mostly with single academic libraries, uh, but we're interested in getting in touch with consortium to get a better idea and overview of what is needed and also to see if it's possible to simplify the processes which is there. Okay. We, we have a very good example in Finland, so okay. we can discuss further. <laughs> Do we have any more questions uh, in the audience? Oh, over here. Yes, it's about your global knowledge database. Uh, I think it's a great project. Um, I would like to know whether it's mediated or not, because if everybody's uh, putting some information in that database, how do you manage to keep things going on properly? All right, so GoKB itself is uh, managed by other organization. Uh, so I don't sit with very much detail on how they do it, but I know that they're gonna have some moderators especially in the start, to, to go through the data. And right now, I believe it's uh, a limitation of who, who can change the data themselves. Uh, yeah, just to answer that, I know GoKB have a stand inside uh, for very specific questions about GoKB. Uh, they will be as good as me to answer those questions. Okay. Um, I, I have a question, sure. actually, because you said you, um, you had just launched a data repository service. Um, what sort of services do you see being put on top of uh, data repositories? What kind of services? Yeah. Uh, it's, first of all, about visualization, or first of all, preservation, so that the institution have a place to store the data, and also that they have a place to assign the advice, which the researchers are looking for, because they know that's important. Also integration with other services to make it easy and also um, make it easy to upload the content is important. I talked with one yesterday that also, they were looking for an integration with Orchid because they knew that their organization gonna use Orchid for uploading most of the metadata. So those kind of implementation or integrations with external services will be important. And do you see, um, are libraries asking for data visualization services, or are you developing those with researchers? Data digital Vi visualization. Or visualization. Uh, it's a little bit both. It's mostly from the researchers themselves that find it interesting and cool to, to be able to display uh, their content to the rest of their community. Not, not necessarily the librarians themselves, but their colleagues on other institutions. Do we have uh, more questions from the audience for, for Kenneth? Okay. Well, if not, I think I'll, I'll bring this uh, session to the close. And um, uh, can we all show our appreciation for Kenneth? Thank you.